Let's head to Eastern Southland now on the country just outside of Gore. There we find Andrew Morrison. Who's Andrew Morrison? Well, he's a Balance Agri-Nutrients Director, and when he's not doing that, he's the Chairman of um, Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Andrew, a bit of a frost on the last day of October in yeah. Southland this morning. A bit of a surprise when we woke up this morning, Jamie, as I was saying, we had a couple of young Canadians arrive and they thought they'd left the cold country to come here and they got a bit of a shock. Let's have a look at, we're going to have a look at several topics today, climate change and the freshwater policy, the CPTPP, and if we get time, I'll, I want to discuss Beef and Lamb New Zealand encouraging feedback on the government's new, or improved hopefully, NAIT policy. Let's start with climate change and freshwater policy. There's a lot of scaremongering going out there that perhaps farming may be legislated out of existence. That isn't the case. No, well, I mean, yeah, look, I think there's a lot of fear out there at the moment because there's a lot of stuff um, that's happening that will impact on our ability to do things. Now, look, so to start the conversation, look, Beef and Lamb is on the bus with all these initiatives because, you know, we're going to talk about CPTPP later. And the reason why this is important, because water quality and climate change is really important to our customers and it's important to New Zealanders. So, you know, look, uh, in relation to, you know, we export 90% of our sheep meat, high 80% of our beef. So if it's important to our customers, then we've got to listen. Um, what the issue is, we've always got to be um, outcomes-based as opposed to inputs-based. You know, we could regulate and say you can run one cow per hectare or one sheep per whatever, but the reality is it's got to be outcomes-based. And we're just getting to the point where some of these things are becoming very inputs-orientated, and we just want to keep working through that process. The other one when it comes to climate change is how do we treat greenhouse gases. Do we separate methane from carbon dioxide? That in itself would make a huge difference to farming under an emissions trading scheme. Oh, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's been a fascinating uh, process this year because we have the, the net carbon zero, but you've got to put underneath that now why. Why do we want to be net carbon zero? And this is all to reduce or no additional warming. So if we get our heads around no additional warming, then that's what the uh, split gas debate about because, you know, methane short-lived gas, CO2s, nitrous oxides, long-lived gases. So to get to no additional warming, there's a lot of uh, debate at the moment around Methane, it could be only a 10% reduction to 22% reduction may deliver no additional warming. Where we do know that carbon, which is transport sector, uh, energy generation, industry, um, you've got to get carbon to net zero. So, I mean, there's huge, you know, there's hugely different impacts on the gases. So, you know, look, you know, we're looking into this heavily and we've got a really unique profile in, in New Zealand. 48% comes from agriculture, but of that 48%, 80% of that's methane. So if we get the split gas debate, huge impact on or huge benefits to New Zealand. Let's give the government a pat on the back for finalising, hopefully, the CPTPP, the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. I hope I spat that out uh, correctly. Free trade is our life and soul, isn't it, as a trading nation? Yeah, when I reference the fact, you know, 90% and 80 high 80s of beef, you know, that's that's the lifeblood. And, you know, really give kudos to government. Uh, it was a change of government through this process and then to get this over the line and to get into the fourth uh, member state to or the fourth party to ratify this is fantastic. So we're really pleased with government for doing this. Uh, we're the fourth since we've signed it. Canada has uh, signed up to it. only need one more to sign up and we're ready to go on this. And this is a $60 million in tariff benefit to New Zealand. So I really want to sort of thank government for doing, uh, for doing, for really supporting free trade and these, these agreements. Absolutely. Uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand is encouraging farmers to have their say on the Ministry for Primary Industries consultation on how to improve the NAIT scheme. Because if M. Bovis has taught us nothing else, it taught us that there's some holes in the NAIT scheme, big holes. Yeah, some big holes and some, there's been some poor adoption of practices by farmers. So look, we're in the process of consultation on this. You know, I suppose I have a vision that we could be a global exemplar in this space, but that's a global exemplar of uh, ease of use and uh, uptake by farmers. But, you know, we've got to have everyone on the bus, basically. <laughs> it's a silly saying, everyone on the bus. But, you know, we've got to build a system that's workable and that farmers understand why we need it. One of the issues was highlighted here, should all species be in, uh, in NATE? Um, we've been working on electronic 
ASDs or electronic animal status declarations and basically the conversation is do you need individual animals tagged at a sheep level 90% go straight to slaughter in the beef industry, 39% of beef go straight to slaughter. So we've just got to work out the values um, of doing it at an individual animal level as opposed to mob-based level. OK, Andrew, and the good news is to finish on, um, sheep and beef farmers looking for pretty positive returns this season. Yeah, look, I mean, it's been a good year last year and these uh, winter prices for sheep, meat and beef have been nice and strong. Indications are it's looking good. We've got the uh, the Brexit negotiations still going on in the UK, um, 29th of March this year, Easter fall, 16th of April. So, look, things are looking good, but you've just always got to be aware of all the issues out there. You can't beat a late Easter if you're a New Zealand <laughs> farmer. Andrew Morrison, keep up the good work. Enjoy farming and, or well, the rest of your day, farming in God's own province, Southland. I appreciate it, James. Great talk.